win. Bubbles and squeaks? I like mine with ketchup. Next on The Amigos. Welcome to Amigos, Everything Amiga Podcast slash video show. I'm your good buddy, Amigo Aaron, here with special surrogate host. It's the Brent. It's me. I er- can't be getting right of. Listen, listen. You know, by the way, we are Thank broadcasting. Thank you for your very low and crappy applause. Well, I mean, that you- was the most... Well, I guess I have to clap. <laughs> Listen, you, that's all you've earned. Is that that, that was elementary school band concert <laughs> clapping right I'm sorry. there. I'm well, sorry. At least you tried. Listen, that's, have you been to an elementary school band I competition? Have. There you go. Well, not competition, concert. I wanted to mention that we are, in fact, on Twitch, everyone. The big T still here. We got banner ads aplenty. You know, there was a big uh, hoo-ha this well, week well, on Twitch. technically our banner ads will be... Legal, even under the new... Oh, no. Yeah, no. Well, because it promotes our own stuff. Yeah, but we also promote other people's stuff down there. So, yeah, and we're taking up well in more than 3% of the screen. In case you've been living under a rock, Twitch tried to shoot themselves in the face and foot simultaneously this week with the stupidest new rules I've ever heard. you got to be really flexible to do that. Yeah, and then... Much like a, a hyperactive, uh, regretting Michael Jackson, they moonwalked backwards <laughs> at an alarming rate. And then they sent this, I guess, did you ever see who runs Twitch, the old guy with the guitar and the hat? Yeah, I don't yeah. know where they got this guy. He's the king dog of Twitch. He had an apology video. And I love the apology because I'm like, listen, uh, you didn't quite understand what we meant. Yeah, we did. You put pictures in to show us what you meant. <laughs> what you meant to do was screw everyone out of all their sponsorship money, all of them. What did you think about this uh, ridiculous, ludicrous well, baloney? I, as soon as I heard, like, the, the major... Because here's something you might may or may not know about Twitch. Okay. Like, you've got your little pee on people like us, right? And then you've got major corporations that will host these incredibly popular streamers. They make sure they have all the equipment they need, the the they get all their advertisements for them, and they, they run, like... Eight or nine of the most popular streamers on Twitch. Yeah. That, that that happens. It you don't get it's not televised, advertised, shown in the product, but that happens. And like one of the major ones whose name fails me right now was like, if you do this, we're leaving. Yeah. And it was just like, mmm, because that's like I'm I'm saying these these this conglomerate is like millions of subscriptions. Oh, I know. And they were like, oh, okay, we ain't doing that. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Well, listen, the the people at at the wheel, it's, I don't know what it is about internet companies. But like they've got something, and they're like, we gotta steer, well, we gotta steer the ship into the iceberg no, as quickly as possible. No. Here's one thing, I'm yeah. gonna, I, and you're gonna be like, guys, ah, you either yeah, I'm prepared to hate. They're Go Amazon. Ahead. They've got all the money in the world. That's true. Um, the reason why Twitch was trying to do this is the Twitch wants to make money off running ads. The no sub- kidding. The subscription money and the the money from bits. When people buy bits and donate through the application, they get a little chunk of all that. But the advertisements that people run that are baked into the video, that's yeah. not going through Twitch. They like don't get, us, for example. They, they don't get any of that money, right? And they want some of that money. Yeah, oh, I know what they want. And, and, and are they are they deserving of some of that money? No. I, I think they are. What? What do you mean? We're providing 100% of their content. It comes from people like us. Right. And they the, provide no content. But they're also preserve, uh, uh, giving 100% of the platform that we do Listen, it this is the platform they built. And also, they just forked a bunch of money from everybody in the first place. That 70-30 going away. I'm not... This is one time where it's okay to pile on the jerks. Twitch got greedy, and they got slapped back. Well... Slapped back by the little guy. Here's and, the, of course, the huge guys as here's well. Here's the problem. You can't have a platform like this and drop something that major no. you have yeah, there to, were contracts in place you have to already have plans in place to say listen you can still have your advertisers you just need to run it through this application now that way we get 10% or whatever and you can have the rest of it 
And if once they have that in place, because this isn't going to going away, once they have that in place, they're going to re-implement these rules, and it's going to happen. Because right now, on the books, Twitch is not self-reliant. Well, let me tell you something. I don't care what they do. We could both agree that this was the one of the dumber things we've ever seen. They yeah, busted it was out horrible, at this a horrible, horrible, horrible night. You're all dumb. Now you'll recall, Brent, and, and then we'll move along. That we came to Twitch like two hermits escaping from in the night from a burning village that we'd started the fire. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna when say. we got when we personally were responsible for getting the amigos kicked off of YouTube for 30 days. Sorry about that. Yes. You can blame Bill and Ted for that one. That was dumb. <laughs> it wasn't our fault. They get YouTube, don't get me wrong, I'm not cutting any slack. Those guys are goofs too. So basically we gotta play ball in the court. Provided yeah, for us. That's right. By God, but we're not going to play fair. That's for darn sure. Well, I, I'm pretty sure we make up point zero zero Listen, zero zero. I want to lots you, more zeros. I won't allow you to disparage our fine fans and comrades like that. What? They make up 100 percent of the spirit of Twitch, if not the actual, you know, overall mass of money. Of well, Twitch. I hope not, because about half of Twitch sucks. Well, there you go. Okay, they make up the good part. <laughs> Would you shut up? You're killing me. Let's get to the. So the sound just sort of kicks off right there. Yeah. Uh, See, you're the bald one. I'm wait the big a minute. blue guy. At least I get to kick you around. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a little game. And ride me like a horse. <laughs> well, boy, you really ruined that for me. <laughs> this little game I like to call Bubble and Squeak. Now, did a little research, uh, Brent, before the show. I'd hope so. It's kind of how the show works. Well, I, well, I, mean, I, you know, I, I know all these facts. I'm not looking at a form. <laughs> So, did you know that Bubble and Squeak is a Brit? This is from Wiki. I'm not. I'm, I didn't reword this. It's a British dish, according to Wiki, made up from cooked potatoes and cabbage mixed together and fried. Yeah, that's sort of why I made the comment at the beginning of the show. That sounds like no good to me. No, sounds sounds delicious. I don't like cabbage. This thing. Oh, also, cabbage stinks. Uh, cooked cabbage is fine. It's so stinky. It's fried. It's fried cabbage. Well, that's cooked. <laughs> Well, it's fried. Just shut up. <laughs> anyway, that's what Bubble and Squeak is. Did you know that before right now? Obviously not. I didn't either, because I guess in the UK, and maybe some of the folks in the chat here that are in the UK can tell us if this is like a well-known like household meal. I don't know. We don't do it here. It's definitely not as well-known as, say, Bangers and Mash. There you go. Like we, that, I, I actually was aware of before I had it. Did now, you come, Were you on the show when we covered that? Yes. Oh, okay, I can't remember. And I've actually eaten Bangers and Mash. How was it? It was good. There you go. So, oh, by the way, the rabbi says, Bubble, Bubble and Squeak is the basically all the spare stuff you have fried. There you go. Well, <laughs> hey, I like this. So, this is one of the rare games, uh, Brent, that was out on the CD32 and HEA before the OCS version. This got, they retrofitted it for OCS. Uh, the CD32 and HEA version, uh, 1994, and all the rest of them. Uh, so, this was up for the CD32. Oh, yeah, we'll get huh. into that. Yeah, we'll get into that. Um, this was published and developed by an outfit called Audiogenic, uh, who uh, they developed, uh, really, I don't know if there's anything here we've looked at. They did Blockbuster, Eurochamps, uh, X-Live, Loops. I've heard a lot about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then some games in, in foreign languages. I'm not going to embarrass myself. But they, they've <laughs> published late. a lot of, like, rugby, cricket, stuff like that. So they do a lot of sporty stuff. All right. You know. Um, it's a one-player game, of course. Uh, the crew on this, uh, I'll look to see who, I mean, a lot of them worked on the same stuff. You got that, uh, it was designed by Patrick Fox and Scott Williams. Uh, Patrick, and a lot of the guys worked on a, a game called Super Tennis Champs and Loops, uh, coded, uh, by Alex Slater, Raymond Price, and the graphics were done by the aforementioned Patrick Fox and Richard J. Smith, and of course the music by everyone's favorite, the Bremster. Alistair Brimble. By the way, I think Brimble would have been a good name for the guy in this. If he didn't get to go, if we weren't going to go squeak, Brimble, I think it's a good name for this guy because he sort of looks like a Brimble. Brimble, if you don't know what he's done, it's just everything. All the Dizzies, Agony, Body Blows, Alien Breeds, Lost Vikings. I could go on for a year about his antics. So, I will ask, because I always ask Boat this, have you ever heard of this or played it before this, no. this week? Mm -mm. Nope. I had heard of it, but I'd not played it. And also, I got this confused 
uh, with Bub and Sticks quite a bit because they're sort much of much different games. Well, no, they're not. They're not entirely dissimilar. That's nah, pretty different. What do you mean? T- it's a guy in a, in a thing he orders around and throws and stuff. So it's not, it's not totally dissimilar. Plus, it's something and something. You know, I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, don't say they're dissimilar. They're very similar. You know, Super Mario Brothers was Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. Would you just Does stop? that count? So, let's talk about the backstory for Bubbles and Squeak. Did you read the docs on this at all? The so, docs, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, you had to, I thought. So, and basically, long story short, Bubble is a little kid yes. in, in this, and Squeaks is the guy. By the way, this was originally not titled uh, this. It was going to be Barney uh, uh, and Clyde, I think that's what it was called. That's much, much worse. Well, they, yeah, they backtracked on the old Bonnie and Clyde gimmick to, to go on this road. So the gimmick in the story, the backstory is... Can I make a guess before you tell me? Sure, go ahead, because you're never going to get this one. Is Squeak his imaginary friend? No. Oh, man. Although, good try. That's what I would have went with. Well, no, they went with something far worse, actually. Okay. So <laughs> this is incredible is lover? Go, Bubbly is getting ready to go to sleep. Not that bad. Oh, okay. Bubbles getting ready to go to sleep, and all of a sudden, he's like, what is that in the closet? Well, here comes Squeak. Squeak, by the way, is this unnamed blue alien. All right, we should mention that. Yes. Let's listen on a podcast. And Bubble is this little, like, cute little bald kid, not unlike Hobbs. Actually, the Calvin and Hobbs are what these guys sort of remind me of. I, think, I mean, he. this guy's like a little bald version sure, of Calvin. Sure, sure. He's cute. He's oh, a cute yeah, kid. he is. He's a cute kid. I mean, and, and he's not going to be listed in the pantheon of horrible Amiga mascots. This guy's not that bad. No, no, no. He has charm. So, anyways, in bed, right before he falls asleep, here's something in his closet. It squeaks in there. He's like, what are you doing? He goes, listen, I've jumped into a black hole. Like, my world has been uh, taken over by this jerk called the Cat of Nine Tails, and he's got us all working in the gruel mines. That's bad times. By the way, the plant's named Gruel, too. He's like, well, what do you want me to do? He goes, can you come help us? Like, we need some help. He's like, well, how do we do it? He goes, well, because I jumped in a black hole to get here after I ate a magic jelly bean. Or no, gumball. Excuse me, I'm about bad. And he goes, oh, he goes, we'll just jump in another black hole. And he's like, well, I don't, what, like, do I have one? He goes, how about the hole in your sock? And he's like, all right, let's do it. And then they go. And that's how they wind up on the planet Gruel. That's the backstory. Now, this, unlike most CD32 games, or really any, a lot of Amiga games, this has no intro at all. No. Nope. Like, there's no, like, like I don't know why. I'm assuming they wrote this after the fact. Yes, I would assume know, so as well. Because there's not a whole lot of, allu- uh, it's not alluded to that much in the game. Uh, and so, uh, the game starts off with the usual, you get options. I do like the options. By the way, do you know what version this you played on top of your head? Uh, what do you mean? Did you play the AGA, the C32, or the A500 version? A, a, well, I played... Did you I, play the version? With I, the, I played the Genesis version and the AGA version. Okay, so I tried I tried all of them. I mean, so here's what I can tell, just to get this out of the way. The AGA and the C32 version are identical, as far as I can tell, except for, for one thing, and that was uh, it's got uh, uh, CD music on the C32 version. Makes sense. Now, the CD music is pretty good, and the non-CD music is pretty good on certain levels. So that both of them were good. I, I don't think Brimble did the actual CD music on this, but I, I could be wrong about that. The, uh, also, they, the HEA version of this and the CD32 version both have really cool backdrops. They've got the old stuff in the background yeah. routine. And yeah. this is very similar to like Adam's Family on the Amiga. Like if you had the A500 version, you just get like a, it's nighttime yeah. in the background. Yeah, it's it's, it's much lamer yes. looking. Uh, so, the, so here's the game. You are you control Bubble, the small child, and your goal is to get through uh, 30 levels to get to the end of the game. Uh, you get to the end of the game, and well, I will say I played this at first without any instructions, and so when I saw one million collectibles, my heart sunk. Yes, I was like, oh god, no! I am right there this with you. This is going to be another one of those games where I have to collect a thousand things to, before I can leave the level. All right, it's not. Thankfully. Thank God. However, it does have a gimmick. So, once you get into the game, your object of the game is to get you and Squeak out of the level. Yes. That's the key. Because the first time I played this game, I thought I got to the end and I couldn't leave. It's a little like, almost looks like a buzzer from like, mate, press your luck or something. I, I thought it looked like a barber pole. Yeah, something like that. And so, but I was like, what do I do? I was hitting buttons, nothing was happening. You have to get Squeak up there with you. And that's the pivotal part of the game. Squeak's got to be there with you at the end of the level. You don't have to collect everything, but you have to have him at the end of the level. Some of them actually aren't that long. 
but the key is getting him there. So yeah. Squeak is can is invulnerable. He can't die. Okay, that's good. Uh, but and he can jump and follow you, but he's not as agile as you are, and he can't jump as far. Right. He's not as fast. Something else that needs to be mentioned. Yeah. He does not start the stage with you. No, you have to collect. You have him to first. find him. Yeah. Some stages he's there though. It just depends. So I never started a level with him. Oh yeah, he was there. He was there. He was. I mean, you could see him on the screen. Oh well, yeah, but that's totally different. So once you once you uh, get to the, end of the level with with Squeak and Bubble, they shake hands. The level ends, and then you move on to the next level. Now, uh, the actual game level itself, it's a, it's a, it's a platform game with with puzzle elements. Quite a few. This actually. is a hundred percent a pl- yeah. uh, platform yeah. puzzler. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, when you have Squeak with you, you can sort of like issue him follow you. He'll follow you around like a zombie unless you tell him what to do. Okay, yeah. so you can say in a very cute voice. They did a great job with the voice in this. You can say, "Stay here" or uh, "Let's go." Basically, it comes with him. Yeah. You know, in a kid voice, and Squeak will do what you want. Now, <clears throat> often you'll have to get Squeak can't jump as far as you. So in the first few levels, I was irritated because I was like. This guy sucks. He was literally ruining the game for me. I mean, he is the embodiment of dead weight. It took a while before I realized that, like, that's the game. Like, getting him to the end of the levels is a big chunk of what the game is. Yes. Not so much yourself. And so, uh, what you're doing is basically, like, telling him to wait here. And you do all this with a joystick. Now, this game, when you set up the options, it gives you the choice of a one-button stick, a two-button stick, or a CD32 pad on the... Uh, on the uh, um, C32 version, which is nice. Uh, uh, well, I guess probably on all the versions. I didn't. I didn't pay the attention to that one. Amiga 500 version. Did you notice that when you picked the options on that? I did not. Yeah. So I, I'm probably right across the board. Uh, and so I used a two button stick on this. I don't know. I'm assuming you used a two button. Was well. It? Like I mentioned before, uh, this also came out for the Master System. Yeah. No. Uh, Genesis. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Um, I inadvertently played this for about an hour and a half on the wrong system. You're an idiot. <laughs> My God, how did you make that mistake? I, I went to, I found it online yeah. to play, and I searched Amiga, yeah. uh, uh, Bubbles and Squeaks, yeah. and, and then when I hit the, the search, yeah. this came up, so I started playing it, and it is identical down to some voices I think, the mu- I think the stuff. Genesis mu- music's better. And, the, and some music stuff. I, I think the non-CD music is better than the non-CD music. I mean, it's not bad, but it was real. It was almost like too sedate for me on the Amiga version. It's, it's a good tune, but it's, it doesn't exactly pump you up. No, you know well, I mean? this isn't to pump you up to the game. Well, I wasn't pumped up. It, it, here's the funny thing. I was playing this with three-button control. Yeah. Uh, or two-button control, and never even thought about... That shouldn't be, you know, something you're doing on the Amiga. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're you're dumb. But I did. I was like, after I I, I stepped back for a second, I looked it up. Uh, I think I was watching a YouTube video because I only got so far in the game, and then you I always like to know what would have happened. Uh, and I was like, man, this looks different than mine. I went back and I, I was like, oh, oh, oh God. So then I went back and and did the Amiga version. Thankfully, the, the game itself is. Almost identical. You knucklehead. So let's talk about the controls. I will say this gives you, when, if depending on what control you're using, it does a good job. With a two button stick, uh, you've got one button to shoot. Your uh, your guy throws stars, not throwing stars. I mean like stars. Like in the magic. Sky. Yeah. yeah. And then he also jumps. And you also use. Uh, uh, you can also hold the button down to move your joystick to issue commands uh, for your guy. Yeah. And so, uh, which you know, that's not that bad. Another thing you can do that comes in handy is if. There are some areas of this that have like almost like, like, like Sonic style ramps, yeah. like Sonic the Hedgehog. And what you do in those is like you step back and you just kick this guy in the butt. Yeah, he rolls, he rolls up the up the ramp and uh, uh, you know like a usually uh, flies to oblivion. Yeah, sometimes he flies across <laughs> the screen. I mean, he's cool with it. He doesn't care. He turns into a ball, but it's still funny. Another thing that uh, you can do when you've got him with you is uh, he can pick you up and toss you. Yes. So you can actually you can stand on him too for a little extra height, but you can actually toss him. Of course, the downside of that is wherever he tosses you, he ain't getting up there. So you got to right. find a way to get him up there. That's sort of the game. <clears throat> uh, when you go through the level, you're collecting really you're collecting uh, three different things: diamonds, 
you know, or gems. It gems, looks like diamonds. Yeah. Uh, and then you're also collecting coins that you get coins when you shoot bad guys. Yes. And then you also there are, there's food you can collect. And then For there, and then there's one other thing you can get, which is a, like a, a little submarine. And when you get the little submarine after every level that you have the submarine, you get to do the submarine mini game where you run the submarine with bubbles and squeak in it through like a shooting level. Yes. Uh, not a good one, I might add. No. I, I mean, it looks okay, but it's not fun. I mean, it looks okay, it plays okay, but like you said, it's just not fun. And the fun. funny thing about this level is, it's it's actually, it's deceptively hard at the end. It's because you have to sort of memorize the last part of it, and I hated that. Then if, if you get to the end of it, you fight the Cat and Nantos, presumably, or one of his geeks, who's got an enemy sub, who also is tough. He's, he's, he's tough. fast. Yes. So you have to really be on your toes. But, uh, uh, the funny thing is, in the sub uh, in the sub area, there you'll find the sub icon, and if yes. you pick it up, you just do it again if you die. Yeah, yeah. So I never picked it up a second time. I didn't want to do that level two times. Well, I, I made it through it once, and, and did you actually beat the cat yes. at the end? Pretty yeah. good. He just sort of sinks yeah. when you kill him. You and like you said, this when you pick up a sub. First of all, when you're in the sub level, yeah. you can't lose actual lives. Right, right. It's a bonus. It's level. a bonus stage. Yeah. And if you pick up the sub that takes you to the bonus stage in the bonus stage, it acts as an extra life, uh, which is super helpful. I actually kind of like that they did it that way. Yeah, um, I, I don't mind having a, this. If you look at the box for this thing, I, I looked up the box and I mentioned this for a reason. They were working an angle here, okay? And the angle is, uh, this is a game that does everything. Okay, it wants. It's like, listen, it's it's not a platform. It isn't a puzzle game. It isn't a shoot 'em up. It's all three rolled into one. That's what the box says. Yeah, that's what they're going for. They want you to be like. They want you to get it all. Well, yeah. you know, the the shoot 'em up level is not the. It's it's there. It's okay. You don't it's have fine. to go to it. It's it's not the best. So, yeah. so. <clears throat> We mentioned that you that how you control the guy. You mentioned we mentioned what you can do with the guy. We we there's only one other thing we haven't talked about, which is what your coins do and what you can do. So on certain levels, uh, you'll see a gumball machine. Yes. Okay. Uh, if you when you go there, if you have the right amount of coins, I think it's five coins to get a yes, piece of gum. Yes, it is. Uh, you could get a piece of gum out of this thing and feed uh, Squeak, and and depending on the gum you get. It will give a squeak certain powers. You'll have the ability to ride squeak around. He can shoot like one of the things lets him shoot bubbles. He shoots bubbles. Whatever yep. makes him faster. Whatever makes him pretty much just like you. He can jump further. He can. He can, he's not a, uh, an idiot. He can actually get somewhere uh, when you've got this bean. And one of them actually makes him fly if you get yes. far enough into the game. So this is sort of the gimmick. Uh, to uh, make him a versatile uh, buddy, it, it's here. sort of uh, a boy in the boy in his blob. That's vibes. exactly what I got yeah. out of. It. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's not that versatile. But, well, it, it's it's used to solve puzzles, right? Um, so you you can't do this as a pacifist thing, right? Not that you'd really want to, but uh, you because you can only get the coins by killing enemies. You can't use your gems for it in any way. Uh, but it usually gives you a power that allows you to get. Uh, squeak to the end of the stage. Now, occasionally you'll come across an area, and this baffled me until I read the docs. You'll come across this thing on a level that it's like it looks almost like a a, a a metal a metal domed area, like a little dome will be there. And uh, according to the docs, that's where the that's where your little buddies are held, and you have to pay fifty gems to get them out of there. When you walk in front of it, you just see gems start coming off your total and yes. fly. So at first, I thought this thing was bad <laughs> for the longest time. And only, I, see, only I, recently did I determine what this was. I thought I was collecting those gems. No. I thought that was a special area where the gems You didn't were, see your total no. going to zero? No, I didn't realize it at first. And so when you when you uh, get 50 of them in this thing, you unlock the bonus level. That's a, It's not the same bonus level no, we were just talking different. about. These are other, There's actually three bonus levels. Uh, there's a, one of them called the spring chamber, where it's just you balance... This sort of reminded me of the uh, of the level in Journey Arcade where you have to balance up the, in the drum, air yeah. off the drum head. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you have to spring up and you collect c coins. And there's a thing called the Maze Race, and there's also one called Lift Off. These are three different little mini games. I didn't see all of these. I only I didn't saw either. I only saw the one. That's the only one I got to. Uh, but there, but uh, so that's nice. So you've actually got four mini games in this more or less, which is cool. And that's really the only reference the 
I mean, it's really the only thing that really makes any sense with the backstory of the game. I mean, there's really not... And on the and even at the end on the Amiga version, like there's no, it just says you completed the game, good job. On the on the Sega version, like your guys come out and a bunch of little guys come around, so like it sort of looks like you. I mean, they made it better. Like, like the Amiga it. ending yeah. sucks. It was like <laughs> I was like I watched. I was like this is all you get. That's pretty much the game. Now, as you go through the levels, there are thirty levels in the game, and the levels. Are there? They have different backdrops on the on the AGA versions. Um, so like, and I mean, they the foreground changes too, but they're more. They can tell the levels are different. On the other, like, there's a level that's kind of deserty, and there's one that's kind of oh stony. yeah, the theme changes. But yeah. I mean, the the in the game, like, one will have cactuses and whatnot. And but, the enemies change. And the up. enemies, but then the enemies that we should mention are just sort of like there's worms, there's ants. Sometimes they and they upgrade them. There's these guys with ball bats. Those guys took me a while to beat because they're that's just a kind of a clever enemy. When they're coming towards you, if you shoot your star at them, they'll just whack it with the bat and hit you with it. Yeah. So you had to shoot them in shoot the back. Them in the back yeah. That was kind of that was kind of cool. I yeah. like that. Uh, well, also, levels also will have you moving stuff in the level. Sometimes you'll come across a spring or a flower pot, and you can pick it up and move it to where you need it. You can bounce off of it to do stuff. I thought that was kind of uh, cool. Yeah, it's part of the puzzle. What do you What did you think of this thing, Brent? Before I chime in fully, what did I, you I really liked it. Did you? Uh, yes. This is first of all, uh, Bubble and Squeak are really cute with each other. They're very. <clears throat> it makes you happy because they're friends. Yes. Even in the little in between segments, it shows them like they got Squeak's got his arm around Bubble, and they're both happy looking. Yes. It's nice. Even when you, I mean, you you kick the guy, but it's okay. They're cool with it. Uh, and, and the way they end the level, what, shaking hands. Yeah. I mean, all that. This pair should have been huge. Yeah, they were cute. This should have. This had the the uh, the uh, chemistry. To go really far, it's unfortunate that this was the only game I'm assuming that was made with these characters, right? Because they compel you to do well just because of their charm together. Um, is Squeak kind of useless? Yeah, I mean, but you're helping him get through these levels, so right. it makes sense. And when he comes through, and he when you give him the gum, and he you're able to use special powers and stuff. It's rewarding, and you see that he's able to do more. Or when he throws you. That's yeah. actually, I like that dynamic. That's pretty fun. Uh, and it, th all through the game, they have these big smiles on their face. Yeah, and their big uh, eyes. They're real cute. Yeah, it, and it, it, it seriously compels you to want to do well. Yeah. Uh, which is so... It's, it's unusual in the Amiga. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's they're, they're the guys you play are normally scumbags. Yes. Like I hate this guy. <clears throat> it's Kept so the, yeah. It, it's so nice. Uh, and really, this is one of the reasons why I was so surprised. It was on the 32, and I've never heard of it before because I tried to find good games on the 32, and it's hard to do. Um, it, it's so nice to have a, a duo that you want to do well for. Um, I really enjoy this. Now, for the game itself, uh, it's a platform puzzler. Everything feels fairly good. I wish the uh, gems were a little bit easier to pick up. You've really got to go through the heart of the hitbox to get But you get don't them. actually have to get them. Well, right, right. You don't want to. Like um, they, All you do is miss the bonus games. You know, There's no penalty as far as I can right, tell. Right, but you, you do feel compelled to pick yeah, up Yeah, they're everywhere. Collectors. You can't help it. Um the enemies in this, I think, are fair. It does a decent job of when it introduces a new component, a new thing that you can do, like kick the guy or pick something up. or It introduces it slowly enough that you get the concepts in fairly safe situations, uh, which I like that. That's good game design. I think the level design is, <clears throat> at least the levels I played, I think I got to like six or seven... Yeah, um, I, it, it's funny. Some of the levels are real long. Some of them are actually quite short. And once yeah. you figure out the gimmick, you can get through it pretty yeah. quick. So I got, I, I got fairly far in I, it. I think it's, I, I think the level design is, is okay. I think for yeah. the, for the target audience that this was going for, I, I don't think it was terrific, but I think it was okay. I would assume this was targeted towards a younger audience, but really, it's hard to I was tell. I say Amiga stuff. I will say, uh, I mean. 
if you, if you use, say, something like blood money as the basis, then yes, this is for toddlers <laughs> compared to that. I mean, you could actually, this is a game you can sit down and play. Play and enjoy, yeah. Once you understand it. I, I watch, you know, there's a trend on YouTube. I'm not going to call people out, but it's the live review. Have you ever seen anybody do these? Well, they just, it's like, okay, I'm going to review the game. Yes. This is the first time I've ever played it. And I watched a bunch of these, and they all, and I knew it. That's why I watched them. They all hated this game. They killed it. And the reason is, they had no idea what they were doing. And so if you don't understand the mechanics of this, this is going to feel like the worst game ever. Okay. You'll never get anywhere. Here's my problem. with I, 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 no, I got no beef with people who do these first look things. Right, but that's not what they're but called. If, if, you, if this is your first... If, <laughs> if you do a series on first yeah. looks... You have to be able to grasp concepts quickly, or you're going to look like an idiot. Yeah, I mean, we because played, these concepts were not that difficult to grasp. We played like when we did like Sim Life and stuff. I've got a week, and I'm never, I'm never feel like I'm prepared. So for, <laughs> I can't imagine loading up Sim Life and playing it on the fly, and then giving my review. Like I watch, there's a guy. It's like I can't remember the name. It's like, so like, does this game suck? That was the game it was on the Genesis, and he killed this game. And I'm like. I'm like, he had no idea what he was doing. He know, yeah, I hate that. So idiots. I saw a lot of that. And this is the kind of game that you you really do want to sort of read the docs or at least watch somebody play it so you can understand the concept. Or not be an idiot. You know, because when I first started it, like, I would have been, I was like, I really hated this at first. Really? At first, yeah, because I was like, I, I didn't understand how it worked. And all, I, I will say there were a couple other things I hated that made me hate it a lot. So on my first game, I go all the way through the first level. I get all the way through. I finally figured out I need to move Squeak around, and I get to the point where I'm stuck in the level, and I have to kill myself, which you can. I was stuck. I got to a point where I couldn't move, and Squeak was right up on my tail, and I couldn't move. I couldn't order him to do anything. I was stuck. So I hit escape. It kills your character. I started the level again. Got all the way through the level. Got to the same point. Got stuck again in the exact same spot. I'm so, trying to think of how you could possibly get it's stuck real in that easy. level. It's real easy. And so, um, I guess the moral of the story is, the, whoever did the uh, play testing for level one of your game, because I'm, I'm just, I'm a, I would call myself a pretty decent player. When I instantly get stuck, that's not good for your game. So, I, I had a very bad opinion of this game. I honestly, I don't know how you how you would have gotten stuck on the first level. Well, it, trust me, it happened. I, I would I, lie. I mean, I believe and you. So I'm then, just trying to picture it. I'm going through the levels, like the second level, there's a jump you make. You've got the uh, squeak on you. Squeak's an idiot. He can't make this jump. And I keep trying and trying. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Well, he's not supposed to make it. You have to right. learn that play mechanic. And then there's another part of the game where you have Squeak on a on a platform, right? Because a lot of times you have to get him on a platform. And, and you tell him to stop. Yeah. All right, then it goes up. And then, so I want him to jump, follow me. Follow me. And I jump off, and he falls off the platform. I'm like, what? And it's, what's going on? Well, I learned. When you want him to follow you, you don't say it on the platform and then jump off. You, you go to, to where, where you're, you're going, going, and then you say, then he can make the jump. Well, I'm just saying, these are little things that can get irritating, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Now, what, hold on. Once I understood the concept of this, the game got a lot more fun for me because you've got to realize what Squeak is. And you're right. He, I mean, he's not a genius. He doesn't have the ability to do it. He mostly hoses you because you have to get him around. So if you can't stand a game where you, you're locked, locked, handcuffed to a doofus, this is the way I feel in ARG, by the way. Uh, handcuffed to a doofus. I got to drag him through all these episodes. But uh, if you can get a, past that, then you, there's fun to be had, uh, okay. and it's sort of original fun. I have a question. Yeah. I, and this is only somewhat relevant because in this you control all the characters. Uh, did you ever play and did you like Lost Vikings? I did play it. We reviewed it on this show, actually. It, uh, it wasn't my favorite. Uh, it was not okay. my favorite. And right. I will say, this is not that. No, it's that not. That was it's far a... more irritating than this. Oh, Infuri okay. I mean, let me say infuriating. It's because I'm not good at it. It's a clever game. Don't get me wrong. I thought this game was not as annoying. Of course, I don't know. You know maybe as you get on into the game, it becomes more irritating. But I like, like you said, I like the look of it. it on, on, on the AGA machines, this thing here has console-level... Graphics. I'm going to put the port comparison up here. And you can see uh, the Genesis version uh, looks looks great and plays yes. great. And, you, and I've got the Amiga 500 version up uh, on the other side. And you can see that it's just empty back there. 
uh, the background is missing, and the background is awesome. It looks good. It's a shame that they couldn't get that on the 500, but if you play this on the CD32 or the Amiga uh, uh, 1200 AGA, it looks almost identical to the to the Genesis version, and they did a good job adding, like, some levels have, like, thunder and lightning, and the yes. background splash, and some of those levels with lava. They did a good job. I mean, I think uh, the, you know, console-quality graphics on this. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, now, easily. The Mega Drive doesn't have the voices. The Mega Drive doesn't have the voices. Yeah, I mean, and I, like I said, the, the music, it's really up to your taste. I'm not going to say any of the... I, I think like, they're both good. I yeah. think that the, 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 the Genesis have really does a... They did a great job with the music on the Genesis on this. Yeah. The Amiga music's fine from what I heard, but it was, I mean, like I said, it was a little too sedate for me. Uh, but uh, uh, in terms of, I also want to mention the controls on this. It's not, we've mentioned what they are. They're tight on this. I thought they were real tight. Uh, you have to learn how to control squeak. I mean, you really, that's the key element to the game is to tell him where to go. What to, you know, Make sure you understand how to stop him and start him. But, but once you get to the point where you're getting the, the gum, that's sort of fun too. You're, yes. you're doing stuff with squeak. He feels like less of a load at that point. Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think what you got here is uh, one of the more interesting uh, Amiga platforms. Now, it's not perfect, as I mentioned. And, and the, like I said, the bonus stage, the two, the one I saw, the submarine and the spring one, they're okay. They're, they're not great. You know, this isn't the first game. I think, to, I think they're different enough that they're good additions. Right. Oh, this isn't the first game to tack on a, uh, 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 some kind of uh, extra screen, you know. Uh, for, you know, an extra, like, a side shooter to their game that's not a side shooting game. But, I mean, they did an okay job. Uh, and the mini games are fun. But the fact that they're there goes a long way for me. You don't have to play them. There's yeah. also that. You don't have to play. Just, you know, don't get 50 gems. Don't rescue the guy or whatever. Um, I thought the difficulty was fine. I mean, you could sit down and play this and not feel like you can't get anywhere. Yes. You know? So, I mean, I think you got sort of got a winner here. I, I would go as... I, I, maybe if I put more thought into this, but on the moment, this is definitely, without question, my favorite CD32 game. The, well, I mean, how many have you played? In all well, I, let's put it this way. Of the ones I can remember, this is the one that doesn't hurt me. I mean, how does this compare to your favorites on the CD32? That's what I'm can saying. Can you name any? Do uh, you have any games that you like on like, CD32? Oh, well, let's put it this way. If I can't remember a game on a system, it didn't make a big impression on me. <laughs> Well, fair enough, then. Um, I looked to see how this game reviewed. I was actually quite interested in this uh, because on the Genesis, this reviewed okay. Like, it wasn't like... Uh, and th this is what like, me and Boat talk about. Like, how do Amiga platformers... How do they? How do, how do the ports bear This is out? not an Amiga platformer. What do you mean? I know this is a platformer on the Amiga, but, yeah, it, well, it, has, me. but it has it does not feel like a traditional well, I, Amiga platformer. It is what it is. And so what I, I always wonder how they're going to fare up in the console world. I mean, this wasn't hated, uh, but uh, uh, the Amiga side of things is a whole different story. So Lemon has this just under 8, 7.98. I think that's fair. <clears throat> uh, and also across all the different versions, the ratings were similar. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, reviews for this, Amiga Action gave it a 90, Amiga Format at 81, uh, Amiga Computing gave it a 77. You get some lower scores, and the funny thing is when I read these, I read, read these articles, and I get the suspicion that they didn't get it. Yeah. This is a game that not everyone's going to like, because you have to... You have to be okay with the whole get your partner to the end gimmick. Well, if you're not a puzzle platformer, then, you know, I, of course you're right, not but I mean, like the game. As puzzle platformers go, I wouldn't call this uh, a super difficult to understand, is my point. I this agree. Is, which is good. It's a light, there's it, light fare here. Yes. And as a platformer, it's fine. It's yes. Right. Uh, Amiga Joker, 85, so they, they liked it. Amiga Power gave it 83. The total overall magazine score, according to Lemon, 83%. I think that's I think that's incredibly fair. That's a B. I think I really I think this I mean, you could argue that this is an A, an A game. I mean, um, I, if you look at the I mean, the looks, the sound, the characters, the the there's 30 levels, there's all these bonuses. I think you I mean, you could argue it's an A game. Uh, you could. Yeah, if absolutely. You, if you, and I guess if you're into plat puzzle platformers, you've got an A here. If you're not, maybe not so much. But, yeah, kudos to these guys for creating fun, lovable characters. Yes. And I think that's also part of it. These guys aren't cool. 
No, you know, they're not uh, ant-like uh, representatives for ant-like species. And they're, they're 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 it's a cute little kid and his little buddy. Yes, and so almost bonk-like in a way. You know, bonk. Oh, well, bonk wasn't this. But, this I'm kid's talking, way cuter than bonk. Well, bonk was I had an edge. This guy's like the non. It's like bonk's non-edgy brother. All right. <laughs> yes. But we got one uh, Discord review on this one. This is from Pajaco. Uh, Pajaco writes a slow-paced platform that should be quite chilled, and yet ended up finding it infuriating at times. Audiogenic crammed in too many mechanics, and it doesn't quite gel together. Like the gumball machine to ride squeak is nice, but feels shoehorned in. Squeak is inconsistent, which is where I get annoyed with the game. Sometimes he'll happily follow you and jump to other platforms, and other times to not be able to make or even attempt jumps he did just a few moments ago. Uh, this is your cue to kick him across the screen, but sometimes you waste seconds trying to get him to jump to a platform. That's true. Uh, Squeak can drown with no way to save him, him, which sometimes led to my game getting uh, soft locked, which you can hit escape when that happens. The bonus shoot 'em up levels were a nice surprise, but they are unforgiving, so expect some quick deaths here. The graphics are cute, the music is funky with sound effects, and I wanted to carry on playing, so it's not all that bad. Stick, uh, stick with it. Be prepared to put up with the usual really moments that come from Euro platformers like this, but give it a do give it a whirl. So out of ten. I would. I don't really put this in the Euro platformer stratus. Well, it, it, it does have some blind jumps. Well, it, you can control the screen a yeah. little bit, uh, yeah. but it does have some some blind jumps and that kind of garbage. Well, I mean, I will say that uh, the level design isn't. It's not even close to the worst, but it's not the oh, best. Oh no, no. I uh, uh, and he's not wrong. Uh, there, the one of the downsides of having squeak with you is you do have to. He's not the easiest guy to do what you want, uh, but I, again, you have to understand that. When he doesn't make these jumps or whatever, part of it is because he can't make the jump. That's part of the level, is, sure. I guess what I'm saying. Uh, but there's secrets in it. It's fun. It's a yeah. fun game that that I really enjoyed. So what do you think? Do you give this the high sign? Oh, I, well, I, I, I said it was my favorite CD32 game, yeah, so there you go. Yeah, that's in low company there. It is, but no, I really enjoyed this, and I think most people out there would really enjoy it. I would concur. If you ask any Amiga repair technician what the most problematic component of a motherboard is, they'll undoubtedly mention capacitors. The electrolytic capacitors that ship with the Amiga are 30 years old or older at this point, and each one is a ticking time bomb waiting to explode battery acid all over your motherboard, sometimes damaging it irrevocably. Don't wait. Replace your capacitors now. Full capacitor kits for every Amiga model are available now at RetroRewind.ca. Don't want to attempt the repair yourself? Use their white glove recap service and leave the intricate removal and soldering process to the professionals using industry standard equipment. Use the promo code AMIGOS10 at checkout and save 10% off your cap kit or service. Remember, make RetroRewind.ca your first stop for all your Commodore computer needs. That was it, Brenda. Baked, oh, ba- oh, sorry. Baked in ad. Baked, uh, baked in uh, ad. We already oh, talked boy. about that. Woo. So, listen, there's already only one news item that everyone's talking about this week. Boat the Fest. Brand. Aside from Boat oh. Fest, uh, you're right, there's two <laughs> news items. And that is the uh, AGA Kickstarter uh, that was the, it went up this week uh, from our... Uh, uh, with a guy we actually had on the show long, long ago, uh, Mr. Pleasance, David Pleasance, a uh, renowned uh, former Amiga UK employee who uh, who uh, did some marketing, was a real genius type back in the day, and now he's a mainstay on all the conventions. He's on all the shows. He's everywhere, brother. He's everywhere. And so uh, we've heard about this uh, AGA, the Amiga Global Alliance. That sounds like a uh, a new belt for for in in. Uh, AEW, it's the AGA title, the Amiga, like a new wrestling promotion. It's down, all, down the Mexico, one of the Mexican bells. It's almost like a wrestling promotion this week too, because there, to say that the reception for this has been uh, um, uh, mixed would be an understatement. Uh, th- this is a Kickstarter that's out to to uh, fund the uh, Amiga Global Alliance. Uh, for 2023, uh, it's a uh, they've raised uh, already raised three thousand. Uh, bucks or so out of the eighteen thousand eight hundred twenty-one that they're looking for, 
uh, out of this. They've got uh, 21 days to go on this, so it's going to be interesting to see what, how this thing goes. Now, uh, in case you don't follow things on the uh, on the net, uh, what is this? You may ask yourself. Well, uh, this is a uh, this is an interesting idea, which would be a uh, sort of an all encompassing uh, uh, body uh, that with a, with web with a web presence that would do stuff like have uh, uh, worldwide user group directories and calendars and worldwide uh, repair facilities. Uh, and um, uh, also, it would have uh, help, you know, like uh, you better get help with your Amiga problems sure. on here. And you get like a, uh, uh, you get the old, uh, you pay the old fee. I think it's like 40, 40 or 50 euros a year, something like that, pounds, whatever it is. And you get the old uh, membership card. I was telling Britt before the show, this sort of reminds me of the old RPGA I was in back in the old days. I was a heavy role player, which is the role playing game association where. It had, uh, I think, originally it had TSR behind it, and eventually it was Wizards of the Coast. And you get a, you get a card, you pay the yearly fee, and you get like uh, access to the Living Greyhawk campaign, and you get discounts. And that's the way, sort of, ways this, this was pitched. Um, I, uh, you know, we don't do much with hardware and, and you know this sort of stuff, so I didn't really look into it that much. I'd heard about it for months uh, as he was working his way up to it before this kickstart. Um, my thing on stuff like this is, uh, if you're not, if it's not your bag, you know, you just don't, don't support it. You know yeah. what I mean? That's so much my thing. Uh, the, but this week has been, uh, uh, rowdy to say the least, because there's a sizable portion of the Amiga community who doesn't support this. And their argument behind it is, well, We've already got all this stuff now. We've got EAB, Amiga, uh, English Amiga board for like uh, for help and for all that stuff. Plus, there's a big German one, there's a big Polish one. So there's sort of like these localized support areas and for buying and selling and whatnot. And some people are worried this is going to be a gatekeeping maneuver, you know, which I, you know, where uh, one or two people or, or or a crew of people are going to be handling all the. Uh, Comings and goings of Amiga, which you good luck to that crew if they try to pull that. That'd be one heck of a usurping right there if they could try to pull that trick. I don't think anybody's got those kind of guts. Uh, but so, so if, if this sounds good to you, you know, great. If it doesn't sound good to you, fine. But the 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 thing that worries me is is that uh, um, the uh, uh, Mister Pleasance, who's uh, I mean, it, again, this is a guy who's in his se- I believe he's in his seventies. He's a, sort of the elder statesman of Amiga right now. Has just been getting uh, uh, mauled. Now some of the some of the uh, some of the people are, are they lay out a very compelling argument against his his idea. You know the the guy behind the terrible fire had a pretty compelling argument. On the flip side, some people are just nasty. Yeah. And there's a there's a thing, and we've talked about this a couple, couple months ago, but I know you about this when when Lady Decade got got into trouble and just got ripped to shreds. I mean, violently and nastily ripped to shreds by people. There's a thing on YouTube right now. It's it's a, the character assassination shuffle. It's that whoever the bad guy is that week, they kill him, kill him to death, in, in the nastiest ways possible. And I hope uh, we people will will use some common sense. I mean, it's one thing to not agree with somebody in their in their bit, but man, you don't have to get nasty about it. real in the mud nasty about it. Well, here's the thing. Uh, This sounds like, and I don't know the ins and outs of this, but what this sounds like to me is uh, woodworkers have have groups where they they pay a um, they pay a certain amount of money, and what that does is give them a directory of resources where if they need a big planer or something, right, to do something outside a tool that they don't have. It has a directory that says, listen, this person's in your area. Uh, uh, they're part of this organization too, which which kind of says that they're willing to help you. Here's their contact information. You can come to them maybe for free, maybe for a small fee. I guess it depends on what, what you're trying to do. And, and it, it's a resource and a tool to, that you can use, tools that you don't have otherwise. Yeah. If that's what they're trying to do, uh, that's great. I, I I don't I don't know if the need is necessarily there, but to be completely honest, I'm not 
I, when it comes to Amiga hardware, I've got, you know, zero invested. Yeah. Zero invested. So it's not for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if it if the community feels there's a need there, then this will this will thrive and take off. And for the people that are being nasty, uh, here's the thing. This is trying to get away from people like you, right? This they if you're sitting here and making personal threats and personal comments, uh, uh, the community doesn't want you. No community wants people like that. Yeah. So you're not you're not gaining any ground. If you want to say I don't like this, uh, if you want to say I, I think we have alternatives that the, that makes this redundant, that's fine. Right. I'm not saying don't express your opinion, but, but because I express my opinion all over the place, yeah, we can't shut your uh, opinion up. But if you're making personal attacks, that 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 to me says. You know what? Maybe there is a need for this because I don't want to go to a chat room or a message board or a forum or a Discord and ask a question that might seem minor or easy to someone else and get lambasted for it. Yeah. When you know, if that's what if that's what the community is devolved into, something like this might just be the thing to say. Listen. You don't have to do that. Here's a safer place for you to come and ask those questions and to really start to, to grow my skills or my knowledge and stuff like that. Um, on the surface, I, me personally, uh, this isn't something that I'm going to invest in, but it's not targeted towards me. That's right. And, so, and I will say, um, a lot of uh, 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 very honorable and trustworthy people are... Uh, involved in this, including right. our buddy Frank and Amiga Bill. I think Doug pitched in. So there's some people in there that are uh, at least somewhat behind the, the plan. Right. But, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, it's all about, okay, you're in or you're not. Okay, that's fine. And there's money involved. Some people don't like that. I could dig it. All right? Why do we need that much? I don't know. Just don't back it if that's your bag. Yep. Just like anything else. Just don't back If it's not your bag, don't back it. You can even say why you're not back. That's fine, but there's no reason to get in the mud. No, no. And badmouth the guy who's probably a, a grandpa or a someone's, you know, this, well, this, you it, know it, an old. Re, and, and, regardless and, of who he is or what his past is, you don't need to go. At, you don't. You don't attack someone like that just because you don't like something they're doing. That's right. I mean, this isn't. They're not doing anything that's controversial or 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 in need of of attacking. This is someone trying to put a, together a community, and if the community is there to be put together, it will happen. And if it doesn't, well, then maybe we can all take a step back and say, listen, this didn't work out, but it shows that we, we need to help some of these people that have that, that are looking for help. Even it's already raised almost $3,000. That means there's at least some, uh, uh, need, some people out there feel that this is something that needs to exist. Yeah. So... Uh, and 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 just to close the door on this, uh, I mean, Mister Mister Buzz has been around the block. Like I said, he's hit he hits all the conventions. And I'm sure there are people that do and don't like him. That's right. And I mean, he's listen. He's endorsed some other stuff, and you know, so there's a there's I can understand why people would be hesitant to get involved in one of his projects. Yeah, no problem fine. with that. Yeah, you know, just yeah, just uh, and I could fully dig it. You know, uh, but you know, if it's not your cup of tea, uh, you know, just move on. Yeah, just. There's no reason. Yeah. I don't. You know, there's this trend where people go out and just kill these people to death and then stomp their corpse. You know, I mean, I wish people Ridiculous. were nicer. We yeah. talked about it before the show. If we could put a motto on here, just be nice to one another. That's all we're asking here. Uh, everybody, well, be nice and be fair. nice to me, and then everybody else too. Who knew the Brent voice of peace and reason? <laughs> that is baffling to me. Uh, if I'm if I'm honest, so unless you like Bomberman, then you're just not my cup of tea. What? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you killed that. You didn't think twice about that. So, uh, again, thanks, everybody, for checking us out this week. Uh, if you uh, haven't looked on our uh, channels this week, we actually put up a couple of shows. Now, you're going to uh, tell the people about ARG, Brent, what's going on with ARG this week, because we sort of didn't put an episode on uh, on Wednesday. So tell them to scoot. Well, if you're watching live, just hang on in. We're going to be getting to it. Yeah. Uh, but by the time you watch this on a video, I'm assuming ARG will also be out. And we are be taking 
a, a lovely stroll down Creative Vision Lane. That's right. So we're we're actually going to make up for lost time this week, and uh, and we're not. And so there will be all. We're going to get all the episodes that we had something to go down that uh, required us to uh, not be not be able to record this week. But we're life back. got in the way. Yeah, stupid life. It screwed us again, to Brent. Uh, uh, while we're mentioning it, I want to mention that uh, we did release a few things this week. Uh, my gosh, we released a a uh, uh, look at the S the uh, ZX game Avalon. This is quite so a game, good. actually. Uh, I'll be honest with you. It's a, uh, a very interesting game with yes. some really nice graphics. And then Bo put something together on the side here. It's every Amiga baseball game. Kind of neat uh, to see what's out there. And Bo even put a little commentary in on it, which is cool. Uh, the stream team, uh, we did have a release this week. It was from yours truly. Uh, last week, not you, the oh. cool one. Uh, I got this, uh, I went to the uh, local gaming store, the Brent, and they had this, I was like, I don't want nothing. I was all crap. And they had a, 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 a Sega Saturn HDMI converter. And I'm like, yeah, I'll drop some money. I'll give it a shot. And lo and behold, it worked great. No, great. And I was so inspired. I did an all Saturn review that on the disaster stream last week. So if you're into the Sega Saturn, uh, get in there and... Uh, and have a look. And I will say, uh, soon to be back on the channel is Sprite Castle. Our good buddy Rob Flacco here has been on tour this week. And he actually went up to Prince's house. You know, to hang out. Do some music. Stuff like that. I'm going to guess he wasn't in. Well, he was. He, well, I don't know. <laughs> Spiritually, you never know. Let's see what we're getting into next week, the Brent. I'm not in here. You know, let's see what you're not going to get to play next week. Sorry. Look at that. It's one of your old favorites, too. Beach Volley. Yeah, it was sort of like beach volleyball, but there's no ball, apparently. It's just beach. <laughs> no, the symbol for, the the way it actually reads is beach volleyball net. Is that what, <laughs> sorry, it's written in hieroglyphics. <laughs> what was that volleyball game we used to have in the arcade machine? Super volleyball. That was a pretty good one, too. Great so one. We'll see how this Great one fares. One. Hey, you know it's from Ocean, so you know it's gold. It's <laughs> Ocean Beach Volleyball. Makes sense. No, no, you see you're reading it wrong again. Oh, sorry. Thanks, everybody, for checking us out. Uh, we'll be back next week with Beach Volley. And until then, do it, Boat Junior. Adios. Adios. Amigos is made possible by contributions from listeners like you. Patreon supporters help choose the games we play, receive exclusive magnets, and get access to the Amigos Retro Gaming Discord server. Visit patreon.com slash amigospodcast if you'd like to support the show and join our community.